In this video, we're going to have a look at the newton raphson method for finding roots of equations or systems of equations. We'll start off with the most simple case of one equation in one unknown variable, f of x equals zero. We wish to find points where the graph of f of x crosses the axis. Ideally, we would like to rearrange the equation to obtain solutions for x in closed form. For instance, if f of x is x squared plus 2x plus 1, we can simply solve by completing the square to obtain x equals minus 1. In most cases, however, it's not possible to obtain solutions explicitly in terms of elementary functions. How about f of x equals x to the 5 minus cos x, for example? There are several numerical methods that can be used to find solutions of problems of this type. All of them are successive approximation techniques. They work by making repeated estimates until a root is found. The most rudimentary method of this type is probably the bisection algorithm, which relies on finding two values which bracket a root. In the example given here, f of 0 is negative and f of 1 is positive. Since f of x is continuous, the graph must therefore cross the axis in the domain from 0 to 1. We could then try f of 0 0.5 to see which half of the interval contains the root. By repeatedly bisecting the interval, the root can be located with increasing accuracy. The drawback of the method is that the accuracy of the estimated solution only improves by a factor of 2 with each approximation. The newton raphson method is also a successive approximation technique, but it's more powerful. It offers the possibility of much faster convergence, and it can also be used to locate complex roots. Let's have a look at how it works. We start by considering the Taylor expansion of f of x about a point x0. The newton raphson method relies on the fact that the linear approximation to the function is good locally. So near to x0 we can replace f of x with the boxed expression and neglect the higher order terms. We can represent this graphically. Suppose that this point here is x0. The boxed terms are the equation of the tangent at x0, which is a good approximation near to this point. Now that we've replaced f of x by a linear function, we can solve. Graphically, we follow the tangent down to the x-axis to obtain a new approximation. This works well when x0 is close to the root. The method can be applied repeatedly to obtain better estimates. If we make a poor initial guess for x0 that isn't close to a root, the method normally jumps around for a while before converging to a root. However, if we hit a value where f' prime of x is 0, or numerically close to 0, then the method fails. The method also cannot be used in cases where the second derivative of f of x is much bigger than the first derivative of f of x in the vicinity of a root. In general, however, once we get close to a root, the method demonstrates quadratic convergence. That is, if x minus x0 is some small quantity epsilon, then the neglected terms in the approximation are only order epsilon squared. 
and this means that our next guess will be correct to this order of accuracy. Now let's have a look at how the method can be applied to a system of equations in several unknowns. We'll start with two equations in two unknowns. Now we need the multivariate Taylor expansions for these functions. We need the Taylor expansion for f about a point x0, y0, and the Taylor expansion for g about the same point. The neglected terms here include mixed derivatives, such as d2f by dx dy. We assume again that the linear approximations are good locally. We can write the system in matrix form by bringing the second term over to this side we can see that we have a system of the form ax equals to b where the constant array here is b the vector x minus x naught y minus y naught is what we've called x and the negative of this array here is what we've called a we can solve to obtain x equals a inverse times b or in MATLAB we have x equals a backslash b let me just add hat to these x values here and then I can more easily rewrite this system in terms of the original variables we can put x hat equals x minus x naught where x equals x, y, and the subscript 0 refers to evaluation at x0, y0. We can put b equals f0, where f equals f of x, y, g of x, y, and the subscript 0 refers to evaluation at x0, y0 again. And we can put a equals minus j where j is the matrix of derivatives evaluated at x0, y0 the matrix j has a special name it's called the Jacobian in general for a system of n equations in n unknowns we obtain the iterative solution shown here where x is the vector of variables f is the vector of functions j minus 1 denotes the inverse of the Jacobian matrix and the subscript i refers to evaluation at the given point.